I am Dr. Ayushi Kavas, uh, JR3 in radio diagnosis. My paper presentation topic is Spectrum of MRI Findings in Female Pelvis. In females, majority of uh, pelvis tumors arises from genetic urinary organs with less common site of origin, including connective tissue, nerves, and lymphovascular structures. Since accurate diagnosis is essential for optimal management, imaging is useful for suggesting the correct diagnosis or narrowing the differential possibilities and distinguishing tumors from their mimics. Pelvic ultrasound is often the first imaging modality performed in women with pelvic symptoms. While ultrasound is often useful to detect a pelvic masses, it has significant limitations in assessing masses located deep in the pelvis or near gas-filled organs. CT also has limited value in pelvis owing to its inferior soft tissue contrast. MRI is frequently the optimal imaging modality as it offers both multiplanar capabilities and excellent soft tissue contrast. This presentation highlights the diagnostic accuracy of pelvic masses and focuses on MRI features of some common and uncommon masses. Aims and objectives to describe the MRI features of various pelvic masses in determining its benign or malignant nature. To describe the accuracy of MRI in determination of pelvic masses and third, its histopathological correlation. Methodology, a cross-sectional study was conducted in Department of Radio Diagnosis, BKL Vallavalkar Medical College and Hospital on 50 females with suspected pelvic masses after taking consent. All patients underwent MRI and results of MRI were correlated with histopathological and operative findings. Inclusion criteria, clinically suspected cases of pelvic pathologies, incidentally detected cases of pelvic pathology on ultrasound, patients of all age group will be included. Exclusion criteria, contraindication to MRI like metallic implants, cardiac pacemakers, cochlear implants, claustrophobic patient and the third unwilling for imaging. Some interesting cases, MRI findings in female pelvis. So first case, uterine fibroid with cystic degeneration in 35 weeks pregnant female. History of severe abdominal pain. So uh, this is the fetus and this is the anterior wall intramural fibroid with cystic degeneration. Second case, sacral chordoma in 49 year old female with lower back pain. T2 sagittal MRI. Large heterogeneous lesion arising from S1 and S2 vertebral bodies. This mass is also causing compression over urinary bladder and uterus anteriorly. T1 post contrast showing strong post contrast enhancement and also seen involvement of the right side of the hip bone. Third case diffuse adenomyosis with right hematosulfing. Sagittal T2 weighted MRI. There is thickening of junctional zone forming an ill-defined area of low signal intensity with punctate high intensity myometrial foci in the anterior wall of uterus. Same patient, there is T1 and T2 hyper intensity in the tube-like structure on right side that is right hematosulfing. Incidental finding is bilateral avascular necrosis of the hip joint. Fourth case, Uterine AV malformation with the large hematoma. T1 weighted MRI showing large hypo intense mass in the uterus with the few flowoids. T2 weighted MRI shows a multiple flowoids with the heterogeneous mass in the uterus. T1 post contrast image showing a hematoma which is non uh, non enhancing with the multiple flowoids, multiple uh, vascular channels crossing the mass. Fifth, serous cyst adenoma. On T1, it is hypointense. On T2, it is hyperintense. Vaginal carcinoma. On T2, there is a mass involving anterior wall of the vagina. Slightly posterior T2 weighted image showing a large mass also involving posterior wall of vagina. On post contrast images, the mass is strongly enhancing with the lymph nodes. 7th, right ovarian dermoid cyst, T1 hyper intense, T2 iso intense, more like towards hyper intense and T1 fat set image showing a fat saturation. So this is the dermoid cyst. Cervical carcinoma with the gross hydrometra and uterine deposits. So T1 hypo intense, T2 heterogeneous cervical mass causing gross hydrometra with the uterine deposits which is also enhancing and diffusion weighted imaging shows a restriction of cervical mass. 
Results MRI were performed in 50 female patients who presented with history, symptoms, and signs of pelvic pathologies. The results are depicted below. Table 1 Age Distribution Maximum numbers of cases were in the age group of 31 to 70 years and minimum in less than 30 years of age. Table 2 is of diagnosis. Maximum numbers of cases was of cervical carcinoma followed by the fibroids. Cervical cancers was shown to be occurred in 60 to 70 years of age group and fibroid was common in 30 to 50 years of age group. Correlation of MRI with histopathology. So, MRI showed an overall sensitivity of 86% and specificity of 98% and diagnostic accuracy of 98% in comparison to the histopathological correlation. Discussion. Female pelvis is the most mysterious part of human body, which presented with many vague symptoms and gives variety of findings, comprises of benign masses like fibroid, ovarian symptoms, to malignant masses like carcinoma cervix and Sometimes there is bony malignant lesions like cordo, as in my case. Although ultrasound is the first screening to tool for examination of female pelvis, but when sonogram is suboptimal, the origin of pelvic masses is not established, or when differentiation between a simple fluid lesion and another type of ovarian tumors require further clarification, MRI will be the second choice for the further evaluation. In this study, MRI showed an overall sensitivity of 86% and specificity of 98% and diagnostic accuracy of 98% in comparison to the histopathological findings. So, in comparison to the gold standard test, like histo that is histopathological examination of specimen, MRI can be very much helpful in obtaining the diagnostic and narrowing the differentials in pelvic masses. These are my references. Thank you.